Lying between the Cheviot Hills and the Scottish border, here in the extreme north of Northumberland, lie the Ford and Eatle estates. In an area with one of the lowest densities of population anywhere in England, it extends to a little under 6,000 hectares, or just over 14,000 acres, based around the two villages of Ford and Eaton. Being so close to the Scottish border, the area is rich in history. The two villages have their own stories to tell. The castle at Ford was built in the 12th century. It played a prominent part in the Battle of Flodden Field in 1513, in which the English inflicted a bloody defeat on the Scots, and in which King James IV of Scotland himself died, the last British monarch to be killed in battle. Etel Castle dates back to the 14th century. It fell into ruin soon after Flodden. The times of conflict slowly and finally gave way to peace and stability, culminating in the Union of England and Scotland in 1707. Significant improvements were made to both Ford Castle and the surrounding farms during the late 18th century under the Delaville family, and again in the 19th century when Ford was owned by the Marquis of Waterford from Ireland. In the early years of the 20th century, the two estates became united under one ownership, when the first Lord Joycey, a successful owner of coal mines in Durham, purchased Ford in 1907 and then Eatle in 1908. The estates are still in the ownership of the Joycey family. Farming and the farming trades are still the main occupation throughout North Northumberland and the Scottish borders. We have a number of tenants, farm tenants on the estate, uh, who run their own farms. We have forestry, which we run ourselves, and we have a tourism operation which combines a huge number of small uh, attractions and enterprises which come together under the Ford and Eatle banner. The 31 farms on Ford and Eatle grow traditional crops such as barley, the main ingredient in beer and whiskey, wheat for animal feed and biscuit flour, oilseed rape for cooking oil and other industrial uses, potatoes, carrots, peas and beans to be processed by freezing plants for supermarkets, and livestock, principally beef cattle and sheep. When so many of us live today in towns and cities, it is easy to forget that country life is governed by the seasons. Lambing, sowing and potato planting in spring give way to the long growing period of the summer when hay and silage is made in preparation for winter feeding to cattle, sheep and horses. Harvest time comes around in the autumn and then the first steps in the whole cycle are repeated for the following year. Nesting birds and breeding wild animals throughout spring and summer should not be disturbed. The sap is up in the trees as well, so felling or thinning in the woods is not possible. There are some 650 hectares of forestry and woodland across the estate. About 70% of it is coniferous, such as pines, firs and spruces, and 30% are broadleaves, such as beech, oak, ash and chestnut. But climate change is almost certainly going to affect the type of tree that we can grow in this area. We need to think about what species of tree we should be planting today that will be harvested in 50 or 60 years' time. Ford Neatley State's Forestry Department look after 650 hectares of forestry, conifer and broadleaves. Uh, we look after it for game, our pheasant shooting, shelter for arable and for stock. We manage it for saw logs to come into the sawmill for which we produce all our own fencing material. We then sell it on to farmers fencing contractors, landscape and general public. Field sports have always been practised in this country and are an integral part of how an estate manages the countryside. On Ford and Eatle this mostly centres on pheasant shooting in winter time and on fishing during the summer months. In addition 
We are also obliged to control non-native species that have escaped into the countryside. In this area, we are particularly concerned about the grey squirrel. Grey squirrels were first released in Great Britain in the 19th century and have now almost wiped out the native red squirrel. Here in Northumberland and the Borders, we are trying our best to make sure that we eradicate greys so that reds can survive. So I think we have to appreciate that the countryside doesn't just exist of its own accord. Uh, it needs to be managed. There's not a square metre of ground anywhere on Ford and Eatle that hasn't at some point or isn't still being managed by uh, us mankind. Uh, we are responsible for that. We are stewards of the countryside. I'm the fourth generation to be doing this for the Joyce's. Uh, it's not to say that there may be a few more after me, who knows. But it is very important that the countryside is actively managed and that people kind of don't just take it for granted. We, we live here. We're not a museum in any way. We really work hard at what we, uh, at what we do here. This, of course, also means that we have to maintain all our buildings tracks, houses and cottages. With over 250 across the Ford and Eatle estate, work on repairs and improvements never stops. Like many traditional country estates, Ford and Eatle offers accommodation to its employees as part of their contract of employment. Others are occupied by pensioners whose working life was spent on the estate. Not all of the cottages and houses are required for this of course, so the remainder are rented out to people who work locally or in Berwick or Woolham. The changes in farming and in daily life over the past hundred years or so have meant that we have old buildings that are no longer fit for the purpose of which they were built, that are too small or old-fashioned for modern machinery. A lot of these here at Ford and Eatle are now home to small businesses of many types run by people who live locally and who in turn help to keep the village shops in business or have young children to keep our village school numbers up. These old buildings often reveal evidence of the great agricultural improvements made in North Northumberland and the Tweed Valley since the late 18th and early 19th centuries. At Heatherslaw Corn Mill things date right back to the 13th century it was certainly working at the time of the Battle of Flodden in 1513. Today it is a listed building which has to be preserved but it serves to show how corn is ground by millstones and how power can be harnessed from the river. Locally grown wheat and spelt are milled here as the natural ripe grain that comes from the field and with none of the modern processing additives that find their way into commercial flowers. One farm where there are a number of old buildings is Hay Farm, now a registered conservation farm under the Rare Breed Survival Trust. Hay Farm is home to the Clydesdale horse, once seen in great numbers in this countryside, pulling ploughs, hay carts, timber wagons and a huge variety of other implements. At the centre we have 15 Clydesdales and also a couple of shires and we work to promote and preserve the heritage surrounding the heavy horse working breed. Um, we work together with the estate by doing carriage rides and we show everybody the other attractions that are available on the estate. These attractions include the Heatherslaw Light Railway running alongside the River Till from Heatherslaw down to Eatle. The Lady Waterford Hall in Ford contains unique watercolour murals painted in the 19th century by Louisa Lady Waterford in which faces of the village inhabitants are portrayed. You can learn about the Battle of Flodden through its battlefield trail and wider eco museum. And there are outdoor activities such as cycling, walking, canoeing and riding enjoyed by increasing numbers of people both locals and by visitors. At the end of the day or even during it there are plenty of opportunities to stop for a coffee, a snack a meal or a drink. With so much going on around Ford and Eatle, it is no wonder that the community here is thriving and busy. Throughout the year, the traditional and very popular events that make up the annual calendar, 
such as the Eatle Show or the Ford Christmas Market bring together local people and many visitors from across the region. This is a live and living community. So what is really important to us is that as well as the community, as part of the community, we have our village churches, we have our village halls, we have our village shop, we have the pubs. Uh, these are very important parts of rural life and we try very hard to make certain that everybody comes together to enjoy what is a, what is a lovely place to live. We welcome you to Ford and Eatle Estates and hope that this short film has given you an idea of what an agricultural estate is and what kind of life goes on here. It is a very peaceful and attractive area, but it is just as full of dynamic change and conflicting demands as anywhere in the country. Our aim is to look after it, so that the future generations of residents and visitors can enjoy it, learn from it, use its products wisely and be proud of it. Feel free to explore the estate's footpaths, bridleways and quiet roads at any time of year. Thank you for coming to visit us. We hope you enjoy this wonderful estate.